Hello everyone, I hope you are doing good. My name is Ashutosh and today we are going to talk about a monitoring tool named as Sensu. So basically it is a next generation monitoring tool. You can say uh, whether you have a complex environment or you have a very small environment, it suits everything. So uh, whether we talk about the complexity and auto scaling of the uh, cloud platform or we talk about the normal legacy data centers and normal enterprise environment. So Sensu is the one platform which can help you monitor everything. So let's start this uh, configuration of Sensu. So basically we will go ahead with the five minutes and stop process of the uh, Sensu. So we will be following this guideline but uh, for CentOS this particular guideline is not accurate. Actually few of these stuffs which are not correct correctly mentioned over here. If we talk about this Erlang and this RabbitMQ installation uh, URLs then this RPMs are not present right now for example if, if I will show you here let me open it so if I will open it this particular stuff is not stuffs are not there see this RPM is not at all available over here so the it, the documentation or the guideline is not accurate so uh, you will need our assistance to get it sorted so yeah will be uh, telling you how do we go ahead and find this particular link and this RabbitMQ server so and still if you find difficulties then I will put the uh, location of this particular RPM on the description so it will be easy for you to find it and you can easily install it so for this particular demonstration what I have done I have used the uh, center 7.5 As you can see, it is 7.5.1804 code, CentOS Linux, and uh, I have created it on the Microsoft Azure. So this is my particular uh, resource group. Where is my resource group? Resource group. Resource group. Sorry, I'm checking it on the wrong location. So this is my resource group, which has all the resources in it. So what we can do, we can uh, go ahead and. Uh, add one more port in this particular network security group uh, by default we had HTTP and SSH these two ports allowed but uh, this is not going to help us since Uchiva is a dashboard which is uh, provided by the um, uh, uh, which, which, which is being used by the Sensu uh, which is open source uh, dashboard so you can use any other port dashboard is if you want but uh, the Uchiva is the dashboard which is uh, being used widely when we are using a sensor so we uh, we will be using that dashboard and that dashboard uses the port number 3000 so if you are uh, using any of the cloud environment then uh, we, we may need to allow this particular port so first of all i will go ahead and i will add an inbound rule to allow the communication on port number 3000 just tcp and rest all will be as it is so this will be helpful for having dashboard view and at the same time, you need to make sure that your firewall rules uh, allows port number 3000, TCP 3000 communication. And at the same time, you need to make sure that your uh, firewall deed, firewall daemon on your Linux host either allows it or you, uh, if you are using any uh, demo or uh, virtual environment, then you may disable it if you're just doing it for uh, learning purpose. But in production environment, you may need to go ahead and uh, add a rule. So let's go ahead and uh, start it. So, let me create myself pseudo users. So, service. All right, so that is not running. Okay, that is fine. So uh, the next stuff, what we need to do is we need to start with the this particular process, which is five minutes five minutes installation of the um, Sensu. So if you are um, not very familiar with the Sensu, then uh, there are two stuffs which we need to know for this particular installation. The the first one is the Redis, and the second one is RabbitMQ. So 
these are the two very important stuffs which we will need for or this installation so basically uh, if if you are not at all, but uh, if you talk about the redis then you can simply google it what is redis it will give you more information about it so you need you just need to um google it and uh, this will help you to understand what is redis So this kind of document is available and at the same time you can also have a look on RabbitMQ. So RabbitMQ is also available on the internet. But uh, for your understanding then uh, I will go ahead and I will explain to you what is Redis and what is RabbitMQ. Uh, so where is my 5 minute installation. So before we start uh, I will tell you what is Redis. So basically Redis is a data store. Uh, so if we talk about you know a normal LMS language then uh, it is a place where we store the all of our la logs. Uh, all of our checks and all this uh, other stuff so basically it's a temporary data store or temporary storage where we can uh, store our multiple logs apis information and all this stuff so yeah basically it is a data storage and uh, if we talk about the rabbit mq then it is a transport so if you if you think about old old days where we used to have a postman so rabbit mq is just like a postman which used to uh, carry your message from source to destination so basically it uh, facilitates the communication and uh, yeah, this is what the Redis and uh, RabbitMQ in short. And at the same time, we need to make sure that uh, our virtual machine is of at least uh, two GB of memory, and um, we are using sixty-four bit CentOS seven, and uh, four GB is recommended. So I have been using eight GB of the uh, memory with the two C two V CPU. So let's just start with it. The first thing uh, which uh, this document suggests is installation of the EPL. So, so let's update the EPL. It will automatically install it. The second thing will be creating a repo. So we will start creating a repo once this is finished. So the repo has been created. Now, the third step is uh, installing Redis. What is Redis? That is a data store where logs will be stored. The next thing will be modifying few parameters of the Redis. So by default, after 3.2.0, the Redis is in protected mode, so which is not uh, good for us. We cannot uh, do the manipulation with the parameters of the Redis if we use it in the protected protection mode. Uh, so we don't want you to have it. Uh, protection mode enabled so what we will do we will go ahead and we will disable the protection mode of it slash etc redis dot on and we need to go to protected open mode and here it is so we need to make it no and then we need to save the changes so now we are done so what is next when next we need to go ahead and start these services so the first thing will be enabling the redis and the second one will be starting it so this has been done so as we talk about this erlang and debitmq this is not available let me show you how does it box on your linux platform so as it you can see it is showing that unable to open and you cannot do much about it or so the os cannot do much about it so this is the error so what i have done i have explored this particular uh, erlang and uh, a rapid mq path so what i will do i will put these two locations um, in the description so you can easily find it so the first of all the erlang will be installed in the box because it is a requirement for installation of the RabbitMQ and the second one is installation of the RabbitMQ so let me open it that as well so let's do the installation of the RabbitMQ we are using 3.7 which is greater than 3.6 all right so this two stuffs has been done now so we can refer the documentation after this because all this stuff are good now 
and the documentation so let's do the configuration of the WM cube by default sensor does not perform any of the required configuration so all things needs to be done manually you as a user need to configure each and every single stuff in sensor whether it is transport or it is data store everything has to be configured from you only this is a user creation so that will be done by you only user creation has been done and the last one is your dashboard where you will be uh, having graphical user interface for your devices their outage their uptown uptime downtime everything all the alerts will be reflected now in this particular um, dashboard so let's have the minimum client configuration for this particular host This is the configuration of which you are dashboard and at the last we need to provide enough access or you can say um, correct rights so the files can be read and at the last we need to start all the services which is send to server API and client and at the same time we need to start the which as well so rest all this this stuff are not mandatory for us to do so what next we need to do we need to go ahead and find out the ip address of this particular host let's go here let's go to the public ip address and uh, by default it takes some time to load the uchiva so if you have just configured it then you may not get the prompt right away it will take some time oh security error because it uses http all right so it looks like our heavy resources helped it to come up early yeah so something is running in the background so let's wait for it to complete and voila we are good this particular OGY dashboard is up and running now. So we are good with this particular stuff. And next video, what we will do, we will go ahead and we will try to add another client. This is the default client, which is this device itself. So we have added ourselves in this particular monitoring device for now. All devices are healthy. Just one device is there. Check is not written yet. So how do we write the check? and? Uh, how do we go ahead of it uh, with the other stuff? So I will show you in the next video. Thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye bye.